you can recreate an entire website using artificial intelligence. Let's check out how this is possible. First, I'm going to create a WordPress website. I've been doing this for 10 years and there's no way that I can get any of this wrong. Whoops, I got the password wrong. Then we'll select activate and make sure that we hit that like and subscribe button. Congratulations, we're in. Let's get started. We'll select our website and select manage. Here we'll select 10 web builder and we're going to enable it. Perfect, the installation is done. Let's check out the AI builder now. I'm gonna recreate my favorite website, which is Enhance UI, designed for developers. Let's plug this straight into the URL and recreate it. Let's see how this process works. So here it's got the page ready to go. I'm gonna click to create and import it. So you might be wondering why even do this? Why use artificial intelligence to build a web page? Well, there's lots of reasons. First of all, I build lots of websites in WordPress. And unfortunately, sometimes clients don't even have access to their own website. So when they need to migrate, we have to build an entire new website because our old hosting provider just doesn't give them that access. This tool essentially will be able to give you the ability to rebuild the entire website just using the AI generator and copy that over without any worries at all. This is absolutely insane. I've never heard of anything like this and why I was a little bit interested to check it out. The 10 web guys were actually kind enough to sponsor this video. So thank you to them and let's check it out. Okay, this design has been converted using their AI tool, but I skipped past some steps. So let's have a look at how you do this from the beginning. Okay, the first thing we'll do is open up Google and head over to 10 web. Over here, the very first link will take us to the website and we just wanna head up over here to the AI builder. This is really cool. This builder essentially is made to work with WordPress. And for example, if you've got a design in mind or if you even have to migrate a website over, this AI builder rebuilds the entire website and it works straight away with things like Elementor and stuff. So let's give it a quick shot. I'm gonna head over here to the dashboard because I'm already logged in, but you can log in and access it too. Over here, I get a few different options. So I'm just gonna select this one here to add a website. And I wanna use this one over here to recreate a whole website using their AI builder. So let's check that out. Once I do, I'm just gonna select next and we can go through the process. So we do need to download their plugin, which will do this for us. And then we can access and see how we go. We'll head over to plugins, which is just down over here. And in there, we'll just select to upload a new plugin. So we'll click add new uh, and then select upload and just choose a file. And I'm just gonna drag and drop it right in here. Let's install this and we should be up and running in no time. Okay, great, we're loaded up. We're just gonna activate the plugin and register it. And that's done. We can see it's just over here. It's also installed a couple of other things like Elementor and the form builder here as well. So we can get started immediately. So let's actually head over to 10 web manager and we actually get to go straight to our dashboard. And here is where I had our enhanced UI website created earlier. Let's check out how this has been rebuilt using the AI generator. So I'm gonna select to edit here with the web builder and let's see what we get. It looks like I'm actually editing this directly inside of my own page, so that's cool. We're going to have a look at this back to back with my actual website and this conversion because so far I have to say that I'm really impressed at the job it's done. Firstly, we've got our header over here and it's pulled across the right colors as well as the menu as well. Then we have our hero here, and as you can see, it's not only copied over the text in the right position, but also the font weight. So we can see that this section here has a stronger font weight as well. So that's really cool. Then we've got our contact form over here, and that's come in correctly as well. And finally, our book over here has come across, but one thing that I've noticed is that it unfortunately seems to have lost its box shadow. So it's not absolutely perfect, but it still is a really good job. We are missing a little bit of a box shadow here at the top, but I'm sure that we can add that in quite easily. If we scroll down a little bit, we can move on to this next section over here. And if we take a look at this section back to back, honestly, I think this has happened pretty much perfectly. Like I cannot see any problems. This looks almost exactly the same with the section here. In terms of the actual H element for the header, it's the same size, it's the same font weight. The text here has come across probably for the paragraphs as well as the link that I have down here. 
and even this image has come across. And now that it's here in Elementor, I'm pretty sure I can just edit it if I need. So I could change this coding here to development, for example, and that just updates. So that's cool as well. Let's continue down the page to see what else has come across. So I've got this advanced preview book section. And if we scroll down over here, we can see that that has come across quite well too. We've got the right amount of white space here from the top and the bottom. And my cursor is also the same color here as this page. So I can't really show it off very much. But one thing that we are missing is a little bit of that box shadow here again on the book. But that's okay. I'm still perfectly fine with the result so far because it more or less has the same amount of white space in each one of these sections too. Let's continue a little bit further down here to the about me section. And if we take a look at that, we've got uh, this image here of me. Now, if you have a look, it's very subtle, but I've got this border radius happening around the image. That same border radius has been applied here on the top left and top right corner, but it doesn't seem to have come across here on the left and the right. So that's not bad. I guess it's just missing it a little bit here. And if I jump here into the styling, I might be able to add it back in. But for the time being, I'm just going to leave it as is. We also have a lot of the content in here, as well as some quick links and some testimonials that I have. And if we have a look at these here on the page, those have come across quite well. And the font size and the color and the font weight have all come across too. The only thing that might be not absolutely perfect is the PNGs here. If we have a look, they have a transparent background, whereas here they've sort of come across as squares. And that's very small. I can always edit those, but it is just one thing. And finally, we've got this section here for DevEd. And DevEd being DevEd, his image decides to have jumped here at the very top. Moving on, if we head down here to the high quality instructions and try this out on the AI builder here. We'll actually notice that this background, it's actually a background fixed. And this has actually come across correctly as well because the background isn't moving. It's a really cool effect that I added as part of this page, but this has come across great. It is missing again the background shadow, but I'm happy with this section. If we continue moving down to the pricing and packages section, we can see that that also has come across quite well too. The buttons are designed and centered. We've got our little list items with a custom icon and it actually has created a better custom icon for, here, for me here. It's actually created a little ticks and I'm actually pretty happy with that. The only thing it's missing here is those border radiuses on the images, but I think that just doesn't come across in general. Finally, we can move down to the footer and uh, if we take a look, it hasn't particularly got the background image for this footer section here correct. And I think I might have to change that for it to work properly. Uh, so I would need to change that here in Elementor. But for the time being, I'll leave that. And we've got this final section here where we can add some additional widgets, but I'm going to leave that empty. This is way cooler than I expected it to be. Honestly, I wasn't expecting very much. I thought maybe it'll rebuild some sections, but not too well. And yet it rebuilt my entire website from scratch and pretty much got all the styling right. The fonts were in the right places. The fonts were the right sizes. The fonts were the right weights. We had the colors set up properly in most stages. And in terms of the images, they were all there too. Lists came across, the contact forms came across, pretty much everything was almost perfect. So far, I'm really impressed. Let's actually try to push this down to another level because I've got some pretty complicated website I'd love to test out. Things with animation and parallax and video. So let's see what we can do. All right, let's try a different website this time. Let's actually put one here that I've created in the past called Church View. This is a winery that sells different types of wines and I wanted to see how this goes when it comes to trying to convert a website that has a bit of a unique style. Let's take a quick gander to see what this le website looks like. So what it does is it's got this custom menu and logo as well as this really cool video in the background that's running. We have a bit of animation that pops in as you load through the website. 
And as you scroll further down, this animation is just subtle, but it comes through in all the sections of the page. This whole website I've built myself, so we've got some, for example, display flex happening here, and this also resizes accordingly, depending on how you need it to. So it's got a nice responsive design there. So now that we've got this page, let's see what this looks like once it's imported. Okay, that was pretty cool. I was impressed by just how much was recreated using the AI builder. I've got this website here called the bushfire front. Bushfires are an important thing in Australia and keeping aware of how they are caused and how to take care of them is something that is part of Australian culture. I have this website here that I want to see if we can rebuild using the AI builder. There's a lot in this website. There's animation, there's video, there's a slider. Let's see how the AI builder goes rebuilding this one as an example. Let's plug this one here, which is the bushfirefront.org.au and give it a shot. And the website's finished loading up. Here it is. And we can see that it's come across, but not exactly perfect. It has copied over most of the elements, but it is missing a few little things here. For example, the border radius here on the circles doesn't seem to have come across correctly. And unfortunately, the video and the slider don't seem to have come across either. And there's also a custom font here, and that doesn't seem to have worked. That's unfortunate. I'm sure we can edit this though. We've got our edit tool here on Elementor. And let's see if we can clean this up just a little bit. So in terms of these, they do need a bit of negative margin. That's a little bit of a complicated command to do, but let's see if I can apply, say, a uh, top negative margin 120 pixels and see what happens. Uh, so here, can I do negatives? Yeah, there, that's done a negative, but to the wrong section. Let's actually apply this once more. So select this section here. Uh, go to margin top and do negative 120. So that's bringing it back up to like what we have here. And then after that, I guess this text here could do with some updating. All right, let's try a different website this time. Let's actually put one here that I've created in the past called Church View. This is a winery that sells different types of wines. And I wanted to see how this goes when it comes to trying to convert a website that has a bit of a unique style. Let's take a quick gander to see what this le website looks like. So what it does is it's got this custom menu and logo as well as this really cool video in the background that's running. We have a bit of animation that pops in as you load through the website. And as you scroll further down, this animation is just subtle, but it comes through in all the sections of the page. This whole website I've built myself. So we've got some, for example, display flex happening here. And this also resizes accordingly, depending on how you need it to. So it's got a nice responsive design there. So now that we've got this page, let's see what this looks like once it's imported. All right, so that's done. Let's check it out. And that's cool, it's come across. So let's take a quick look to see how that's turned out. So we do have our main logo and our menu that has come across more or less correct, as well as our video. There is one thing to note though, there is a slight background tint that's happening here on the video and it darkens the background. So that doesn't seem to have come across, but that is something custom in a before element that I've created there. The next section here has this background for the wood as well as the wines over here. And if we take a look at that now over here, it seems that most of the content has come across. So we've got the text, but the background images haven't come across quite well. So that's unfortunate, but I guess that's some of the things that we might have to tune up if we're doing this. If we continue going down the page here, we can see that these sections here that I've added in as flex items haven't particularly come across very well, but this next section here for the cellar door has seemingly come across a little bit better. And finally, we have these four sections here. And let's see, this one here for the subscribe to church view has come across, but uh, this section here for the wine club has lost its font color, unfortunately. 
And finally, we have this testimonial section here, which is a slider. And this slider has in fact come across with arrows, but it doesn't seem to be sliding across to any other features. So that's unfortunate. And finally, if we go to the footer here, the footer is pretty much on point. It's got its Google map in there, which has come across. It's got its Facebook plugin and it's got the contact information here on the bottom left. So not 100% in this case. In this case, this is more about say 40% of a migration for the website, but it's still better than rebuilding everything from scratch. If we actually try out the responsive design, we can see that it keeps its responsive design quite well until the mobile version where the menu seems to have come out twice but everything else does seem to be there in a more or less average fashion. So nothing is perfect in life. I guess this is just an example that we do still need a little bit of coding here to clean this up. Okay, that was pretty much a heap of fun. I didn't expect all those websites to come across and yet Enhance UI pretty much came across perfectly. The other two websites, while not perfect, did come across and we can customize them in Elementor. Tenweb have something really interesting up their sleeves, so definitely check them out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.